a lot of times. Okay, yeah, let's uh, let's get this uh, recording get going. So we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have about um, thirty to forty five minutes, and then uh, we want to cover some topics that we are both interested. In. And then our editors have already sent you some notes ahead of time, so we can we can go through them. Uh, I yeah, understand I just, that. I just, I just got them. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, let's get started. So. Uh, Monty, when you started uh, MariaDB, um, you said that you wanted to create an alternative to MySQL, uh, and then that is always open source. So why is being open source so important to a database project? I think it's important for any big software project, because if okay. you want to compete uh, or to compete with the big vendors, you need to have, mm -hmm. have, have other tools that they have. And okay. I see open source as a better way to develop software, especially when you are small, because um, you can never take uh, into account all the needs of different companies and, and users uh, yourself. You need ideas from the outside. So yes. uh, open source development helps you by you focus on what you think is important, but you get from the help for the community to do all the things that they think is important. That you never could come up with yourself and when you have an active uh, um, environment you get a better product and uh, you also get a much bigger spread of the product because people don't have to pay for it so they will use it and if it's good they will give it uh, or advise others to use it and that's why my SQL uh, become uh, the, the third biggest open source the database just because we got the spread of the community and we would never have been able to do that if it would have been closed source. The other thing is also that I believe that uh, uh, lots of big uh, vendors in the software space, especially database companies, are taking advantage of users and companies by having high prices for something that is no common technology. And uh, I think that's wrong. And I'm happy to see that uh, they've been able to create space where companies can uh, grow and innovate without having to pay to big vendors. For example, the whole internet wouldn't have been possible if uh, we wouldn't have open source as a mm -hmm. ground for it. Okay, but there are, of course, uh, two obvious questions. One is that if it's always free, then how can we sustain? Uh, company, right? Because you still need to maintain uh, a team of full-time employees to maintain that. Uh, yeah, but, uh, free doesn't mean that you don't have uh, revenues. So okay. GPL allows you to do business with uh, companies who doesn't want to be um, open source. And yes. that was one of the uh, key innovations that we had with MySQL, find a business model mm -hmm. around GPL. But you also, of course, all have uh, can get, make money also on support. We have customers who pay for development, and we also now have a have a SaaS offering of uh, of MariaDB, and that's uh, because that's a fully contained uh, environment, and people have to pay for it because it's hardware and uh, accounts to, um, tied to it. So that's yes. a way to make money. The other thing is that uh, you can also do a hybrid. And that's why I mm -hmm. was part of inventing the uh, business source license, where the idea is that uh, uh, the latest version you have to pay for, but the older ones are totally free. Okay. So, so then you have companies who wants to be uh, have the have support and get uh, the features that they need more quickly into production. They they have to pay, and everybody else who are, can't afford to pay can use all uh, three four year old versions. So that's kind of a combination, okay. but still okay. that guarantees more open source uh, or and free software over time. So it's, I still okay. think it's a good compromise. Okay. And then great. And another question comes with the huge community, which is great, but that will bring uh, a healthy, but a, a very, very, um, uh, diverse set of requirements. Like somebody wants database to move this way, somebody wants to move it the other way. 
So how do we resolve the some, sometimes conflicting requirements or wishes from different kind of user? And that just means that you need to have a flexible ground in the database to be able to mm -hmm. accommodate most wishes. And we solve that in MySQL and MariaDB by creating different storage engines with different capability. Yes. And that allows people to develop a storage engine, but still use um, for their own specific needs. We still use MariaDB uh, for the general need. Okay. And we have an ex example for, um, we have a new product in our cloud called Expand, um, which is a storage engine, but gives you elasticity when it comes to handling data, because it's a distributed engine, so you can handle a petabytes of data with high insert rates. Uh, and uh, that's not for everyone, but the thing is that uh, for those who need that, they can still use MariaDB and, and grow, um, while other people who need a really small, fast database can still get that also with MariaDB. Okay. And that's uh, uh, that because we took, took into account the ability to grow in different directions when designing uh, MariaDB. All right, great. Um, another direction of the whole IT industry is the um, is the adoption of so-called AI technology, right? Yeah. Um, so when 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 I was in college, we learned database, but we have the craft, right? Create, retrieve, update, and delete. Um, yeah. We can still support that. But apparently people want some smart database like document to extract data or to help us make decisions. Um, in MariaDB, do you have this kind of effort to make not only to manage data, but also extract insight from the data or help people make decisions with the data? The problem with AI is that there are so many different ways to define what is AI and how you want yes. to have the data. The database can't know that. So what is important for the database is to be hand handle the different uh, structures that the AI uh, needs. That's why we added JSON support um, and dynamic columns uh, early on in, in MariaDB so that uh, okay. you, you can easily um, store and retrieve data in the format that you need. And then it's uh, what is most important for the database is to be fast and flexible enough so that so that uh, the one who works with with AI can with ease and with speed quickly retrieve data from the from the database. Usually, the AI doesn't need that much writing. Uh, it's it's more about right. retrieving in formats, and yes. uh, that's what we what, what we try to achieve in MariaDB. So the I think that these are two different two. Uh, tool sets and um, the more is a question about the layer between the AI and the database. Because the problem also that uh, if you want to have a flexible database or flexible environment, you need, mm -hmm. need to have an environment where you can take any part and substitute that with another one. So if uh, yes. you are running Oracle and it's a, is it too, if it's uh, too slow or too expensive for you, you can easily move to uh, MariaDB or Postgres or any other database. And also you should be able to move those because the, the, the tie, harder you tie your application to something that is uh, very, very static, the more, more you will depend on that, uh, that part. And I think in, in today's environment, you never want to be um, tied to somebody who can uh, change your license cost at any point in time and you can't move away from it. Okay, so you so, you do not want to be kind of a locked down by a, a, a small part of the whole system that really prevent you from being flexible. Yeah, and that also means that you that when you're designing database applications, you should keep in mind that uh, you should make it easy to go, uh, use any database or at least a set of databases. And that also means that the more AI would be integrated in the database, especially a commercial one, then you mm -hmm. are uh, in the hold of that company. And that's never a good thing in today's world. Yes, that's correct. Um, um, also, um, I read that you are still leading the active development of the MariaDB and, and the open source. Um, in the IT industry, 
because uh, we are from China, there's a saying saying that uh, when you are over 35, uh, it's not wise to still do programming coding. You should move to either business or move to management. Um, so um, I just want to get your perspective on that. So that's common in many places. And the main reason for doing that is uh, that uh, you get usually get higher paid in a management position than in programmers because very few companies value uh, uh, really a good uh, programmer. Yes. And um, so it's, it's more about money. And what we, I, I have been lucky in the sense that I've been an entrepreneur I created my own company so I can create my own rules. So what I have tried to do that instead of forcing people to become managers and other things, I basically raised to a position where they, where they are incompetent because they can't race anymore. Uh, instead of trying to create an environment where they can raise uh, their income, but still doing programmers. And one way to do that is giving them more and more responsibility by saying that you are now responsible for this module and any customer who has a problem with that, you are the one who has to handle that first. And you need to keep yourself to be competent in that one and create responsibility area because it's quite obvious if you have a programmer who just jumps around and does little, does little bit and that, it's not as valuable for somebody who says that I take responsible for that. I handle the customers who are issue with that and you can guarantee that this is uh, any problems here will immediately be fixed. That so way you, you can... value, the, mm -hmm. sorry. So you value the depth, the technical depth and ownership. More uh, than... ownership, uh, ownership of code. So I know that this code is in good hands. That's worth a lot. And then, then, then you can pay those uh, engineering more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know so that you asked your... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, please. And so in other words, create the career paths that fits developers. Because a, a good developer is really, really hard to find. And I think that I'm still learning and still be doing better code yes. uh, that I did in the old days. So why uh, stop people uh, to develop in the middle of their, their career? I think that's just uh, not clever for the company because you lose the competence. Yes. So a good programmer might become a mediocre manager. <laughs> yes, you... exactly. Yes. And, or, or, the, or the worst case, a, a really bad CEO, because he's based <laughs> to the place where he's incompetent. Because it's, yes. it's, it's and then they stay there and then uh, become very detrimental to the company. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Yes. OK. Yeah, so I see that you, you are still commit to the source code a lot, and then you also um, have been active. Um, so in the whole MariaDB development, so you are still doing daily code review and uh, uh, write code? Yes. Okay, so I guess there are, besides that, there are still many business decisions that come into you that you, you need to be involved or you need to make a decision. So how do you balance these two, right? Because so, um, I mean, you can, yeah. Uh, I, as I said, I've been lucky that I've been running my own companies, but uh, I always thought that I have shown that I have some talent in writing code. So I, I, I want to stick with that. So I always hired a manager on, uh, and uh, leaders on uh, above me uh, so that I can do the thing that I'm good at. So I'm, okay. I'm part of decisions regarding code quality, community, and uh, and the direction of MariaDB. But I also spend a lot of time visiting customers, visiting uh, um, engineers in different companies. I've been lots in China, uh, with the working with Alibaba, Tencent, and, uh, and others, um, mm -hmm. just to understand their needs of the database. And so, okay. and also get them to cooperate on, in developing of MariaDB. Oh, and right. um, I think that's, uh, is the most important thing I do in addition to doing programming. So I try to do, do a balance uh, between programming and meeting customers and being on conferences. That's my main things. Decision making okay. is only for the really important things. And of course, part of the MariaDB board so I can 
direct the companies in the right direction from there. Okay, good. So you you keep the company in a good direction, but for many details, you delegate to other very capable yes. managers. Yeah. A good manager needs to learn to, to delegate. Yes, definitely. Um, um, so you are still, uh, I, I imagine you, you do a lot of code reviews for other people's pull requests. Yes, I do that because uh, I, I, I'm used, I started programming when you need to know, know everything about the computer, the CPU and everything else to make the most performant code possible. And I'm trying to teach people how to do that. And new programmers, they don't know that. They are used to, to Java, Python, something else. And it's more important to get something working than mm -hmm. to get something working and efficiently. And also, it's a different thing to program a project that uh, you start and it should be able to run for years compared to something that uh, an application that you start, you run it for one hour, and then you take it down and you free all the sources. As a total different environment. And I spend a lot of time teaching people how to program in this environment. Yes, that's a very good point because, for example, when students are in college, when they also have the class or course project, usually you need to run for five minutes to show to your teacher, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. There's no long term maintenance you need to be worried about. Uh, but if for a database, people expect it to run for decades. Yeah, so exactly. it's a different. Yeah, it's a different perspective. So um, uh, do you have any trainings like how to be a, how to be a good database developer? Or you just uh, like learn by just being part of a uh, project? Currently, we are, we are too small. We are only in, in the MariaDB engineering team, we are about uh, 40 people. So you can't really have training classes uh, per se, okay. but we do, we do things with code reviews. Uh, uh, point okay. out these are things are that can be uh, done better. And I always had tried to have a mentality, write code that you only have to uh, write once. You need to get it correct from the start. I don't want a code that, oh, we can improve this later. Okay. Spend time, do it correctly. And you should believe that you never have to go and fix something again. So the performance should be optimal for that one. And of course, Sometimes you have to extend things that you didn't think about, but that doesn't mm -hmm. still mean that you have to go and do big changes uh, because the performance reason is in the old code. You need to get performance right from the start. And that's something right. uh, people don't, uh, especially new programmers, doesn't understand. Yeah. Um, so besides the core team that you said you, you have about 40 people, there's still a huge community, right? But yes. if all the people, the junior developers come in, they do not really know the right way of working on a database project. I, I would imagine if you have some training or tutorial saying like, this is the way we should do things. Uh, for example, develop for a database versus develop for a uh, web app, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, it would be, but the, 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 the nice thing is that our code is open, people can, already before we employ them, they can go into the database, they can do patches, they can show their work to us. And we usually like to hire people who is already working on the MariaDB code. And by working okay. on the code, you also uh, see uh, how things are done. And it's uh, easy, easier to copy things that already exist than create new. So people start by doing small modifications and study the code. While they're studying the code, you also learn. So okay. open source also helps in this aspect. So basically, uh, the, uh, because it's open source, uh, the good people should already pass that use the MariaDB code base should already filter out the bad people or the, the people not really fit for this project. It, it, it helps, especially with, with, when you hire somebody who's already worked on the code. Yes. And of course, there's still a lot of things to learn. So why do we do, uh, for example, why should you do a while uh, do um, while loop instead of a for loop? Because you you okay. win one if if you know uh, the conditions of how you enter the function. And people think, but that just uh, 
uh, it's a small thing, but it's a question about mentality. It's like writing, yes. writing music. You need to get a written of a feel how things should be to make it, make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that is the hardest part to learn uh, programmers. I think that you need to spend more than 20 years uh, uh, doing programming until you can see the elegance and the music in the encoding. Yes. Um, but for that part, um, how do you how do you train them then? Because sometimes you can see from a person say he has it, or sometimes like well, if we invest enough time, that person can grow into this uh, capacity. But sometimes it seems like very unlikely. Uh, for that case, if you if you find a person that is really not up to the bar, I mean, what do you do? Then you have a new manager. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, no, but we, we try to, to find a niche for all people. We are more a family within MariaD, with programmers, we take okay. care of each other. And, uh, and uh, some people are more fit for certain roles than others. Yes. And we try to ensure that we find a place where they will feel at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, we can switch gear to the, to the industry. So uh, it seems to me that the database space has been grown in the past two or three years. There are many new databases uh, or new projects coming out. Um, for you, what are the most significant thing happening in the past two years, if you can use a couple of words to summarize that? So uh, let's say five, uh, seven years ago, it was a trend to go uh, to no SQL because people found SQL too uh, complex. You had to learn more. It's much easier if you just do a, a simple store and simple look up and don't have to learn about mm -hmm. optimizer and, and, and other things. And um, lots of companies was, was created in the no SQL space, some successful and some not. And, um, uh, one realization that people seem to have the last few years is that you can't use no SQL for everything. So that uh, yes. uh, when you create a company or you have a company who have a database need, you need to plan for having at least a relational database and then possibly a no SQL. You can't only survive with no SQL. And I see it as the people that started to realize that, that you have, have to have one, at least one database pair path and that the relational one, and then an optional, well, optional no SQL. Okay. And, uh, and, but then you also need to know uh, that does, uh, can the relational database do what the no SQL team want to do? Sometimes it can, sometimes it can't. Mm -hmm. And um, the other trends is that there's a lots of new databases coming up and yes. claiming to be cloud native, when in reality, there's not, not a lot of new things. Um, they are still not scalable for writing and, and doing joins at the same time. So they're all specialized things. And I think that in current industry um, and environment, you need to database that you can run both uh, natively in the cloud and on the premise, because most of the big uh, uh, companies are still running their, their own uh, private private environments just often trying to simulate the same methods that are used in pu public clouds but they're still different and i yes. think that um, uh, you uh, to not be bound by just one vendor you need to design your products that you can work natively on premise and on cloud and um, okay uh, I so think you still think that yeah so you still think on premise is a really a, a important requirement, especially for big corporations, enterprises. I would mean, definitely say because the, what cloud gives you is elasticity. You can be e easily run uh, one app against the database or thousand app and, and scale, but you don't need that every day. And cloud vendors also need to do, do, uh, make money, which is uh, uh, totally natural. But if mm -hmm. you are running something that, um, takes uh, you say, says uses 10 machines and use them fully uh, every single day every single minute then on-prem is much much cheaper 
and you have much more yes. control because uh, you can cr uh, use specialized hardware just for your own uh, requirements that you can't do in the cloud. And yes. I think that uh, the cloud is good for elasticity, premise do, uh, good for cost, and they always have to be a balance between those. Okay. So uh, you mentioned that once it's on premise, you can do optimization because you know the machine, you can do other things. So basically, database layer and the infrastructure layer, sometimes you can, if you go down, you understand the infrastructure, you can optimize that a lot. Yep. But, it, but it, if you, if you uh, want to be very flexible, you have to assume that the infrastructure are just, for example, disk and disk IO, right? So um, should we get more deeper into the infrastructure so that we can get more benefit, more the performance thing, yeah. of it? Yeah. It would be uh, very good if you could, but if you want to have something that works on uh, different clouds, then you yes. have a, a different operating system. You have uh, Azure, you have Alibaba Cloud and uh, yes. uh, Tencent Cloud and so on. All of those are using uh, their own layers and own hardware. It's really, really yes. hard to optimize for all of those. Mm -hmm. And um, you have, there's lots of tools that you can, if you know that your hardware, you can use uh, PGO, a compilation to get much better performance for your application on a particular hardware. And you can't do that on the cloud because you're, even when you start up and something goes wrong, you, you will have a um, failover to a different machine and that may have something totally different. You don't know. And cloud vendors doesn't want to guarantee that because that makes uh, their infrastructure less flexible. Okay. Okay, great. So um, uh, there are a lot of talk about uh, cloud, uh, AI, and then big data. So uh, when I when I graduated from college about thirty years ago, I mean, when people talk about database, they mainly mean they mainly mean banking, like go to a bank or uh, just doing some transactions. So nowadays, there's whole a much wider spectrum, right? You can do a lot of things with. Uh, with, with data. Um, but it, when people say database developer, people usually means it's most likely a backend person, like stay yeah. in the back. Um, so if a uh, developer or if a college graduate want to go in into the database area, what kind of career path do you suggest for that person? Let's say this way. The, uh... It's easy to start with an open source database, and there are many of those. Yes. From is one. Uh, if you really want to uh, become somebody who will be seen as an expert and uh, be, be able to get uh, good jobs, uh, you go to the database that you find to your liking and has a good environment for, for people to grow their, their skills. And then okay. you start to do uh, patches and uh, but you. You, you need also some understanding of what people would need, but you can find that uh, um, by dis discussing with your colleagues who work somewhere and try to solve a practical problem in the database. But basically you work on the database, learn it, and then submit patches publicly, and that will you get credit. It's much easier to uh, create a career when you can prove that, uh, look, my code is used by millions of people and it works. So, so uh, basically that's the... Sorry, please that's the show me your code. Actually. Yeah, and, and also oh. show me uh, show me that uh, uh, my code is used and can be trusted by millions of people. Mm -hmm. Because that's a much higher criteria than just showing that I, I can do something. And also, can you be part of a project? But that also shows that you are a flexible person. You you can work with other people. You can be be part of a group and so on. And that's really okay. important for uh, for. Uh, programmer that uh, companies wants, want to hire. Um, so um, for a new programmer, right? For example, if I just graduate, I just, I learned probably two or three courses related to database, big data, and uh, people might say, well, it's very hard for me to contribute because for example, MariaDB has been development for a while. 
So probably all the simple questions have been solved. I mean, how can I, can, how can I contribute? So, right, because, uh, like, yeah. So um, a, a sensible open source project needs to have a path for getting new programmers in. So we have okay. in, in, in Jira, which is our uh, both bug database, but also feature database. We have uh, lots of okay. tasks marked easy to do that any programmer should be able to do. Okay. And okay. Uh, we also, I also created the MariaDB Foundation as a way for uh, programmers to interact with the MariaDB community and get help in uh, uh, solving the, the problems they have with the, with the code. So uh, with MariaDB, you go in and find the simple tasks. We, we, already, we have that in our knowledge base mm -hmm. documentation, how you can do that. And mm -hmm. if you don't understand it, we have mailing list and we have we are uh, we have our own sulib channel called MariaDB where you can ask for the advice how can I get this, this done? So okay. anybody with a little bit of energy can get the first patch in in a week or two, and they will learn a lot about real programming at the same time. Okay. And other projects can do other things. So it's just a question about will and working from home in a week or two, and suddenly you can be a uh, part of a project. Okay. So it's not that hard. It's much Great. easier. So basically you do. have, a, you build a, some ramp up process yes. so that people can yeah. start. Yeah. Great. Great. And for the community, another question people have is that we all work remotely, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we, we see people's uh, PR comment, comments and coaching, but we never work with that person physically side by side. Uh, also, with the um, pandemic right now in the world, it's uh, it's uh, it's going to force people to stay at home for a long time. Do you think that will uh, impact negatively to the productivity or the co collaboration of a software team? Uh, I have been working from home since 1981. <laughs> 1981. Yeah, okay. and uh, with my with my school and Maria DB, we always work with the remote teams where we. When we, usually when we hire people, we didn't have never met them before. I, in many yes. cases, I don't even know if it's a, 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 the gender of the person. So it's, mm -hmm. um, uh, but that has worked quite well out, but you still need to learn uh, to know persons that you work closely with. That's why we have uh, one or two years, we have a conference where yes. the whole engineering team and, and often the whole company comes into one place and we stay there for up to a week uh discussing the company uh future coding and uh, get to know each other i think i think okay. as uh, in a company you really need to sooner or later know, need to know something about your colleges at least how they look like so the conference yes. is, is important but uh, yes. for working uh mm -hmm. remotely uh, i have found out that it works quite good for about 80 percent of developers you have some okay. small group of developers who, especially those who work too much, that they start to feel like uh, um, a little bit home, home crazy and burn out because they don't see other people. And I just yes. tell them that uh, you need to, you also need to do something to create uh, friends and environment. You can't just sit home and working every day. So it, yes. I think working from home is the most flexible, uh, the best flexibility a company can give to a worker, but they also need to ensure his mental health. And yes. if, you have, if you have a spouse and you have a guest coming over often, then it usually is, is not a problem because then yeah. you see other people. It's only uh, the problem when you never see anyone. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so uh, when I started to work from home from in 1981, I was kind of a little bit afraid also that uh, um, will I have friends and so on? So I started to have uh, uh, parties at my place. Uh, every second week, I invite friends over to come and eat with, with me. I make all the food and then I go and visit other friends and create an environment where I feel comfortable with outside of work. So basically, combine, yeah. so basically you need a work life balance a little bit. Yes, and you need more when you are working from home because you don't have, uh, you don't. Uh, you can't enjoy your beer with your colleges, so you need to do. Yeah. That. Yes. Yes. That's that. That is true. 
Um, uh, also, I, I, from my own experience, when you when other people, your colleague is, is just an email address, sometimes you lose the human touch. Yeah, and that's, you, uh, yeah. Yeah. I agree completely. And that's why I spend much more time on chat channels uh, like uh, Libre.chat and uh, or or uh, Sulib or uh, Slack and talking with okay. people interactively because uh, okay. I still need to be able to ask a question, get an answer and then a follow-up question and emails are really bad with that. Yes. Really. And I also, because of that, I usually work from around 10 in the morning up to three in the night so I can cover all time zones and work with people <laughs> with, uh, from, uh, um, from from China, from uh, yeah. Europe and US, uh, and yeah. interact with all of them. So basically, you become a hub of that communication, like in, in yeah, for developers, yes, yes. Um, but that comes another question. Like sometimes, if you really have to, for example, take a two week vacation, <laughs> when the hub disappear, would the would the whole development process collapse? Or, you, or they can still manage to regroup. No, I'm, I'm not uh, a critical uh, a part in the development process. We have the foundation. We have uh, ten people there who are helping external developers. Internal, okay. we have other people who who are uh, doing other things. I'm doing the most critical uh, development. Uh, I mean the hard hard parts, uh, but uh, that can usually wait for. Uh, for a week or two, it's in, and okay. uh, when I'm working with customers, um, mm -hmm. it's very seldom that I have to go to uh, customers during uh, or talk to customers during weekends. Most people can, the, most cases people can take care of. But I have been okay. working on New Year's Eve and uh, Christmas when uh, critical customers have a critical issue. But uh, the, <laughs> fortunately, that had haven't happened in many years. And one okay. thing that is nice with Finland is that we have. Uh, a five week vacation. And I usually yes. try to take at least three, four of that. And uh, just to uh, get time with the family. Yes, great, great. And for that um, you have to ensure that uh, you are replaceable at least for some time. <laughs> Def definitely, definitely. Otherwise you become a single point of failure, which is also risky. Yeah. Yes. Yes, great. Um, Great, I mean, we have a great talk uh, at the end. Um, we have many uh, young developers in China. And then of course they move from, they move towards different directions. Some want to do front end, some want to do back end, and then some want to do database. Um, what are the uh, general solution uh, suggestions that you have for these developers besides being involved in the open source project? Anything, any advice? Uh, I have uh, had lots of interaction with uh, Chinese developers and have been mm -hmm. very uh, positively, um, not surprised, but uh, happy with uh, their, their, what they know, how they program. I only been sad when they say that, no, they're going to stop programming because I need to be a manager. I think that's the biggest mistake they can do. They need to go uh, mm -hmm. to the manager and say that, hey, I want to do more. I want to be responsible yes. for this project and everything else related to that. I can manage some people, but, but uh, only by coding myself. So uh, I think it's critical for a good manager to also code. So being able to split your time so that you manage people for or a team for 25% of your time and coding uh, 75, because also the people will respect you more as a manager if you're one of them. Mm -hmm. and not uh, seeing somebody who doesn't understand the development process at all. Yes. So I think that uh -huh. we need to have a, more communication within the companies to get the decision maker to understand your value as a programmer. And the, okay. the question is that, do, you want, do they want to have a great programmer or a mediocre manager? Yes. And I think that any company who is sensible should say that we, we value great programmers. Yes. Um, but one really realistic challenge is that, for example, if I want to get into coding, and then uh, my piece of work will have other dependencies, right? Yeah. But sometimes as a manager, you get dragged into 
different meetings, which has high priority. And then you say, well, I have to go to those meetings, but then you are working with delayed and then you become a bottleneck. Yeah, but then you shouldn't put yourself in, in, in that position. You, you can always find a good manager. It's really hard to find a great programmer. It's almost okay. impossible. And yes. most people in the industry knows that a great programmer, he replaces uh, five normal programmers because the yes. difference is so high. And you really want, as a company, have mm -hmm. the great programmers. But okay. uh, the, uh, the biggest fault in the industry today in many companies is that they don't understand the value of good programmers. Yes. So basically, stay at the front of the of the battle, just working on code. Yeah, and if That's your company right. doesn't understand your value, then join an open source project or join MariaDB. We will understand your value. Oh, great, great. Um, so, for example, if I am a college student about to graduate in China, what's the best way for me to contribute or become part of the um, MariaDB community? I, I tried to uh, explain that earlier. Go to Jira, find tasks, uh, uh, go to uh, Sulib, communicate around these tasks, show who you are, what you can do, okay. impress us, and uh, then you will have a workplace for life. Remote, okay. you don't have to move. Uh, I really love the aspect of working from home uh, a, lo a longer time because you have more freedom. If you feel that uh, today I need to go out with a bit, bit uh, my friends or handle a family thing. You don't need to ask permission. As long as you get your work done uh, within a month, you can do anything. Okay. So the freedom is, and you don't have to travel one hour to work and one hour back. Yes. When I go to yes. work, it takes me two minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from bedroom to the to the to the uh, kitchen and, and open the laptop, and, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah, but do you have, or, or does MariaDB, or does the foundation have branches or in, in China so that people can go to those branches to get to meet other people with similar interests? No, I, but I can... we, do, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have that. But uh, before COVID, we had one or two conferences in China uh, okay. a year, three conferences. Anybody can attend to get to know people. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that's a perfect time to come and suggest projects that they could do. And okay. uh, I hope that as soon as China opens up for vaccinated uh, Europeans, we can start yes. doing this again. So I'm really okay. looking forward. To that. Yeah, I have lots of developer friends in, in uh, China I haven't seen for two years and I miss seeing those. So I'm looking forward to that. And I hope Great. that they're not, I really hope that they not have all being managers. <laughs> all right. So let's have a developer to developer meeting. No managers allowed. <laughs> uh, managers, Great. as we are coding, are allowed or have people they want to contribute to the project. That's also good. Yes. Or we can have a so called hackathon, right? People just code I mean, uh, as a way to communicate. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. That's, uh, that's about all the questions I, I asked. And then anything else? You might want to add at the end. No, I think that you covered most of the important things. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I would just uh, say to the uh, Chinese developers and similar people that I met in the past, continue with your good work. You're doing great, but don't mm -hmm. stop programming. OK. Keep writing code. Yes. All right. Really appreciate you uh, have uh, made the effort to uh, have this meeting, Monty. Thanks a lot and look forward to meeting you in person in China. I'm also looking forward to that. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Have Thank a, you have very a great much. Time. Yeah, you too. Bye. 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 <laughs>